So, oh, so, very brief summary. I was being sued for libel going back to 2008, um, but after two years, in April 2010, the BCA, the British Chiropractic Associ Association, dropped their suit against me. So, I kind of feel I was vindicated. I'm still fighting to get my money back because they owe me my costs, and that's after six, seven, eight, nine months, we're still arguing about that. But I'm hoping it'll get resolved. Uh, maybe even, well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I was going to all be over by Christmas, but it probably won't be in this round. Um, uh, and where are, we at, where are we at in general? Yeah, with I was going to say, I was say that, that, but, the, but the more important thing is that in parallel with my case, with Peter Wilmshurst's case, with Ben Goldacre's case, um, people just being sued for libel for writing about science, um, has been this fantastic libel reform campaign supported by bloggers and podcasters and sceptics and rationalists and, and everybody. It's been fantastic. Um, and, and that's really, it, it's, it's incredible. It's a phenomenal impact that this has had on Parliament. Um, a year ago, nobody was interested in libel or libel reform, and yet in April of this year, when the manifestos came out for the three big parties, every party was committed to libel reform. When the coalition government formed, the coalition agreement was committed to libel reform. Um, over the summer, Lord McNally in the Ministry of Justice said he was committed to a draft defamation bill, which is being drawn up at the moment. Um, it's going to be published in March 2011, and that's going to be a really interesting time. And that's why people need to keep pushing why the campaign's maintaining the pressure, because we need to make sure that that draft defamation bill uh, really does not get rid of libel. Nobody wants to get rid of libel, but makes it a fairer, uh, makes it a level playing field so that people with genuinely important things to say, matters of public interest, can express those without the fear of being bankrupted by an unfair libel law. So things are going well, I'm optimistic. I think different people see different different ways. So in, in, in the scientific community, I think people still think of me as a science writer. Um, in free speech areas, <laughs> uh, campaign groups like Index on Censorship and English Pen will see me more as, as somebody who's interested in libel reform. And, and when the case ended in April, um, I think I made a point of travelling to as many people as possible to tell them about libel reform, to tell them about my case. Uh, my case had a happy ending, but these stories don't have to have a happy, happy ending, which is why we need libel reform. Um, and also I wanted to tell these people a story because they've been part of it. So I spoke, uh, I spoke, spoke to lots of sceptics in the pub events in Britain, lots of other events in Britain. I've spoken to the Dutch Society against quackery in Amsterdam, um, Tam, Sydney, the sceptics in Australia, um, the sceptics in Norway, um, just everywhere. And so it, it's a huge relief that the case is over and uh, absolutely relish the opportunity, as I'm doing right now, to talk about libel and libel reform and why it's so important. Brilliant. Well, you have a lot of supporters and very grateful supporters. It's Simon. It's Simon. It's not being sued for libel anymore. I'm very, very happy.